What is going on you guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can merge the world of 3D web development with React.js. And we'll be using a library called React 3 Fiber. Now what React 3 Fiber is, is it's essentially a React based library built on top of another very famous library called 3JS. And what that does, it just allows us to build 3D app web applications now, over the course of this video, we'll be unraveling the secrets behind 3D rendering in React. Whether you're a seasoned developer or someone just getting their feet wet, there's something here for everyone. So just to get up and running, I do recommend that you have some React background, not necessarily 3JS background, but some React, as that will definitely help in this video. But otherwise, by the end of this tutorial, you will have the fundamentals of React 3 Fiber, so you can go ahead and build on top of that and build very immersive websites. But to give you an example of the sort of things you can build with React 3 Fiber, uh, you can go ahead onto their website. I'll add the link in the description, but they have a bunch of different examples here. One being, let's say, Magic Box. And they have this code sandbox where you can have a look at, check out the code, but also get to see what sort of things people have built. Now, this one is fairly interesting. I did click on it not so long ago. But you can see here this cool, rather artsy looking 3D model that they've rendered in. Another cool one is this thing called, or this website called Lusion, where they have this really cool website, which pretty much gives you an idea of what exactly they do. Uh, this nice kind of like ripple effect as you move your mouse. But as you scroll, you get this cool kind of story being played out with this astronaut like whizzing around. I don't know what that is, but it's super cool. Uh, and es essentially, this is what they've built using 3D technologies. I'm assuming uh, with this one, it's also with uh, React 3 Fiber. And another one where you can kind of scroll. And as you scroll, you see these objects kind of rotating and moving around. But we'll be looking at the very basics of this. And then hopefully in the future, we can do a tutorial about building something way more complex, way more animated. But otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. So in order for us to get started, we first need a React environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Vite, which is just another build tool. I prefer to use it. You can go ahead and use whatever you want, but for the purpose of this video, it doesn't really matter um, if you're fine with Vite or if you're just fine using Create React App, go ahead. But uh, I'm gonna add the link for this, for Vite in the description. So if you wanna read more about it, feel free to. But uh, down here, you can see all the sort of installations or ways you can install it. I'm just going to go ahead and use NPM. But if you use Yarn or PNPM, feel free to use that as well. So I'm just going to copy this, go ahead into my terminal and paste that in. Let's give it a second. OK, to proceed, I'm just going to name this R3F. So R3F is just a short form for React 3 Fiber and call it basics. And I'm going to use React, use JavaScript. I mean, if you want to use TypeScript, by all means do. But for the purpose of this video, I think just using JavaScript uh, is fine as I just want to get across the fundamentals of React 3 Fiber. But now I'm just going to jump into that new project. Just install it. Just give that a second. Then go ahead and open it in your desired text editor. I'm just going to use VS Code for this. Let's give that a second. And we're up and running. All right, let me just zoom in for a bit, uh, just in case you guys can't see. So we have our basic project structure, nothing too fancy. But now we need to go ahead and make the necessary installations. So for that, let's go back to the React 3 Fiber website and on their intro on their intro page you see this uh, installation that they're uh, requiring so it's uh, 3 which is a 3JS library then you have the types I guess it's very important if you're using TypeScript and then the React 3 Fiber library itself so I'm just going to copy this and then just go back to my VS code open up the terminal here and then just paste that in. Now, of course, all the code that I write here will also be made available on GitHub, so feel free to check that out. Um, so if you wanna skip this video and just read the code, by all means, feel free to do that. All right, so now we have the 
libraries installed. So we have React 3 Fiber, um, we have the types, and we have 3 as well installed. That's all good. Next, we need to just, yeah, do some housekeeping, get rid of any code that we don't need. So first we have the app.css file. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of that as we don't really need um, most of it, to be honest. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add in, just basically remove anything that's like CSS related. So I'm gonna make sure that the width is 100%, so it covers the whole screen. Height is 100%. And this is mainly for our scene. So our scene takes over everything. And then margin, just to be sure, set it to zero. And padding, let's do the same with zero there as well. So that's our app.css file sorted out. We don't need the index.css file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. Leave that to trash. And the main.jsx file, let's just remove the import for index.css. This is all good. Let's close off our main. Let's go into app.jsx and let's just get rid of all of this boilerplate because we don't need any of that. Let's go ahead and get rid of it and let's just put h1 for now and say hello. All right, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of all of this here. And this is just me being a bit OCD. I kind of prefer it to have my components my functional components written like this, uh, if I can write it like that. Yeah, that took a second, but um, yeah, so we have the very basics sorted out. So let's go ahead and run this. So we're all good. Let's go ahead and open it up. So over here, so we hit refresh. So yeah, we just have our hello, nothing too fancy. Um, and yeah, we're all ready to get our React 3D React application up and running. So to begin with, for every for every 3JS or uh, R3F, um, React 3.5, I'll call it R3F for now. But for every R3F, we need a canvas. And this canvas is basically like our if you imagine like a theater, this is our stage. This is where we're gonna put all our props, all our characters, all of that in there. So for that, I'm just gonna get rid of this and go ahead and type in canvas. And for me, it automatically imported it, but the import is like this. So import canvas from React 3 Fiber. Now, if I go ahead and save this, go back to, actually, let me just adjust all of this. So if I go back here, you can see that we have nothing there. So we just have an empty canvas right now. So let's go ahead and add some characters to this. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and create, and I'll explain in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and say mesh, and then box geometry like so. All right, let's go back. And there we go, you can see here that we have this this the square basically, but it's actually a 3D object. It's just that we're looking at it from the Z axis and looking directly at it. So you can't see anything behind it. And uh, it's, it's basically rendering it right in the center of the page. Now, what are we gonna go ahead and do with this? Well, we can add some color to it. Uh, we can, you know, change the way it's positioned. But let me first explain what we just did. So first of all, what is a mesh? Now a mesh in 3JS is a fundamental building block for rendering any 3D objects. And what a mesh needs is a geometry, so a shape, whether it's a cube or square, a box in our case, it could also be a, a decahedron or a torus or a pyramid, whatever you like. And it also needs a material. In our case, it's just using the very standard material that's why you don't see any cool kind of texture on it. But we can go ahead and add some material to it. So our mesh also needs a material. Let's go ahead and use the mesh standard material. Let's go ahead and add that. And if we go back, it's turned black. Now the reason why it's, it's, it's black is because we haven't given it any lighting. And this particular material needs lighting. 
Um, so we can also use another material. So we can see mesh basic material. And that doesn't require any lighting. So it will show no matter if you have lighting on your canvas or not. And we'll get into lighting in a second. So don't feel too overwhelmed if you are right now. But we can also change the size of our box. Now to do that, we can go ahead and say args and then give it some values. So along the X axis, we'll have it by two. Along the Y axis, we'll have it by two. And along the Z, we'll have it by four. If we go back, of course, you can't see the Z axis from here because we're looking at it directly on the Z axis at the dead center. You can see that it's become a bit bigger. It's two by two on the X and Y. And we'll see in a second how that is on the uh, Z axis. But if you haven't noticed by now, the default value for args is one by one by one. So if we were to get rid of this, we would just go back to a, refresh this, a one by one by one cube or a box. Okay, so now let's go ahead and change the color of it. So let's go back to this and on the mesh standard material. Let's go add some color to it. Let's say orange. We'll go back, it's black again, because we don't have any lighting. We don't see anything there. It's meant to be orange and it is orange, but we don't have any lighting next to it. So let's go ahead and add some lighting to it. Let's go above the mesh because remember this is our yeah, this is our cube. Everything within this mesh is our box or cube that we've created. And then let's add another kind of prop to our stage or canvas. Let's say directional light. And then save that, go back, and it's still black. And you're probably wondering, wait, hold on. It should be orange. We've added our light. How come we can't see it anymore? Well, that's because we need to put it in a position. And right now the light is being rendered right in the middle of our box. So let's put it somewhere. Let's say, let's put it on the Z axis. Let's move it along there. So we type in position as our prop for our React component. And let's give it the position of zero on the X, zero on the Y, and two on the Z. So basically it's closer to us. And we go back. And here we can see the faint orange on it. Now, this is how directional lighting works. And if I give an example of it, let's just go on to here. Lighting 3JS and go into images. The directional lighting works like this. So we have like a, uh, a point where it's kind of like, or a direction in which the light is flowing. Um, what other examples do we have like this here? So we have these rays coming towards it. And as you can see with this sphere or this uh, yeah sphere here, you can see that the areas here become a bit darker because there's less light, etc. All right, um, there's all sorts of other types of light uh, that you can mess around with. And I do really recommend checking out the 3JS docs as they give you a good overview of the sort of lights that they have. So let's go to the documentation, type in directional light. If I can spell, so directional light here and gives you an idea of how this works, gives you a nice overview. All right, so we've added light to our scene. We can see now that our box is indeed orange. Now, now let's go ahead and reposition our cube. So back in our code where we have the mesh, we can add a position to it. And remember we're adding it to the mesh and not the box geometry because the box geometry is just a part of the mesh. The mesh is the entire thing. The mesh takes in a geometry and it takes in a material. So within that, let's go ahead and say that the position of this is going to be one in the X, zero on the Y and zero on the Z. Save that, we go back now. We can see that it's moved slightly over to the right. And that's because over on the X axis, so the X axis going in that direction. But now you can see that it's actually a cube. So you can see the side of it here, the left side of it is it's dark because of the way the light is kind of shining onto it. But yeah, the point here being here is, A, this is how you can position an object, but also 
that it's not actually it's me showing you that it's not actually it wasn't actually a 2d square all right so let's go ahead and add a few more objects to it actually let's take this and let's copy this and paste it in if we go back we still see what looks like one one cube or one box but that's because it's rendered on the same place because we never gave it a different position now we can do that and we can just say something like instead of one let's move it on the minus one in the x-axis and now you have two let's go ahead and add two more so let's take this paste it in and if we go back now again no changes because we have to move this let's move this in the y direction let's move it up to two here so we go back we have one here now let's make another one so we have four cubes and change this back to one so now we have four let me just shrink this a bit so you can see so we have four different boxes now or cubes and they're like this all right now you're probably wondering like this is a bit excessive copying and pasting you know we could be a bit cleaner here so let's go ahead and turn this into a component now i'm just going to go ahead and write the component within the app.jsx file so i'm going to say this one is going to be called cube and what this is going to return is the mesh so we take this paste it in there hit save now we can get rid of this and put the cube in there so if we go back we have the exact same result i've just kind of cleaned it up a bit but let's add some props in so we know we can change the position of it and change the sizes of them so let's say here let's add in position add in the side and let's also say color let's say color can be customizable so here let's change that to position the color of it we'll change that to color and for size remember we can use the args here and throw in side like so all right now here we can say the position if i remember correctly is going to be one zero zero let's give it a color of say red or let's go with green and the args let's just or i guess what did i call it it was called side i guess we should call this size makes more sense size or sizes but anyway size and we'll set that to one 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 go back now we have the green one here and we can do this for a few for the other ones as well so let's create another cube uh, and we need how many of these do we need we need two more but let's go ahead and just kick, take the position here copy that in and let's give the color to be hot pink and size let's give that one 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 if we go back now uh we now have the pink one and let's just do that for the other two set this one to minus one two and one and two so i've just kind of just cleaned it up a bit but just i want to show you that you can quite easily you just turn them into components and use it as you would re uh, how you would think you can use it in react so this is one of the great things with react 3 fiber is that it literally is it doesn't try and break anything of react in order to achieve what you want so if we go back we now have our four cubes all right so let's look at another type of lighting that we can add just want to give you an idea of the sort of things that you can do so we can add something called ambient light and if we go back you can see that now it's changed a lot the 
the edges that were once darker are a lot lighter. And the way ambient light works is if we go to the docks and go to ambient light. So this light globally illuminates all objects in the scene equally. This light cannot be used to cast shadows as it does or does not have a direction. So we don't need to worry about that much, too much. But this part here is very important that the light illuminates everything equally. So if we went back and just commented out our directional light, we can see now if we go back here that we don't really see the other sides of it because this all the sides have been illuminated the same the same amount. But we can also change the intensity of our light. So we can say intensity, let's set that to 0.1. Go back now. They look a lot darker, actually verging on black, but the, you can just about see that they're faintly colored. The same can also be done on directional lights. So we can also change the intensity on that. Say intensity, let's set that to 0.5. Go back, you can see it's all a bit dark, uh, especially the, the non front facing sides. But all right, this is how the, this is a bit of a taste of how lighting works, but you can also group the object. So right now we have four different cubes. So in order to group them, we can just do something like group, like so. And then add group here as well. Hit save, doesn't change a thing. But what this allows us is it allows us to move all of them at the same time. So, or reposition them. So we can say position and let's set the position to that to be minus one. So let's move them down a bit. So if we go back, now they're in the center. So you can move all of them using this group, uh, this group tag. So that's just something that's, I guess, to throw in there. It can be very useful, especially when you've got many different objects around uh, to group them. But all right, that basically covers the very basics of rendering a shape, rendering a cube in our case, changing the sizes, the colors of it, the position, messing around a bit with the light. But now let's go ahead and spice it up a bit and add some animation to our application. In order for us to understand how animation works in React 3 Fiber, we have to get used to this custom hook that comes with R3F called Use Frame. Now, Use Frame is or a hook that basically allows us to run a callback function on every frame. Now, what do I mean by every frame? You can imagine like those old fashioned movie reels where you have something that looks like this and each frame is every little kind of rectangle that you see here. So as the movie or as the reel spins, you see the movie play out on the big screen. So that you can imagine that's what a frame is. Kind of get that into your head, does it? At least for me, it helps uh, me to understand how frames work in React 3 or 3JS in general. Now, React 3 Fiber comes with some pram or React 3 Fiber use frame comes with uh, a set of parameters with it as well. We don't really care so much about the XR frame for the purpose of this tutorial, but rather the state and delta. Now, the state contains various properties and details about the current scene. So all the information there, such as the camera and the uh, objects, etc. Whereas the delta is the, it represents the time in seconds since the last frame. So yeah, this will be very useful and you'll see in a second how useful that can, can be when it comes to rotating our shapes and moving them. But all right, without further ado, let's go back into the code. I'm just gonna go ahead and comment out this here. Oops. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate our cube. So let's go back to our cube here. And first we need the use frame that we were just talking about. So let's say use frame. And this is automatically been imported for me, but this comes again, same place where canvas comes from, from react three fiber. Now in here, let's have our function. And all right, so what we want, what do we want to do? What do we want to do to our cube? Let's say we want to rotate it on the X axis. So let's go ahead and access states and Delta, and it'll become a bit more clear as to why we're using it in a second. 
but we also need to add a reference. So let's just say const ref equals use ref from React. That again has been imported for me right here. And let's add that reference point to our mesh. So we'll say ref equals ref. All right, and now with this reference, we can access our cube. So inside this, let's say ref dot current dot, so standard React here, but we can also access something called the rotation. And we want the to rotate on the X axis. And then we'll say plus equals Delta. And remember Delta is the difference in time between the current frame and the last frame. Now down here, let's go ahead and add our cube back in. So I'm just gonna say here, cube. And let's just set the position to be in the middle. And then size, we'll just set that to one, one, and one. Oops. And let's just give it a color. So we'll say color and we'll add orange. All right, so let's go back to our render and now you can see it rotate and you can see it also takes into account the light so the directional light that we have you can see it gets darker and it gets lighter as it gets closer to the light all right so what about the the use frame itself so let's actually have a look at what use frame is doing so i'm going to go ahead and console.log the first the delta and remember, the delta is just the, uh, it just represents the time in seconds since the last frame. So if I save this and I go back, open up the console, and I should just close this here. But you can see here the numbers whizzing around. But if we scroll a bit, we can see how, like for example, this one here, this, if I zoom in maybe, this. 0 0.01470 so that was the time difference at one point between one frame and another and it changes of course because you know a computer cannot guarantee the exact same value each time especially when it comes to a frame so yeah that's our graphics time or our delta in motion now let's have a look at what this state is let's see what that's all about so if i go back here and click save Go back let me just refresh this but you can see this printing out or consoling it out and let's open one up so inside this so i've just picked like a random random object of the ones that were printed out we get a bunch of information so we get information about the clock uh, how much time has elapsed so in this case like 15 seconds um when it started all of that we get information about the camera and the camera we haven't really looked at yet but um, what else do we have here? We have the position of the mouse, which can also be very useful, especially if you're creating like, I don't know, mouse-based uh, animations and a few other things. So we're not really gonna go too much into it, but just to give you an idea of what's inside this state object. All right, so let's go back and let's go ahead and get rid of this console.log right here. All right, so what else can we do? Let's let's play around with it for a bit. So let's also rotate it on the Y. So let's say ref.current.rotation and then Y. And let's do the same here. Plus equals delta. Now if we go back, now it's also rotating as well as on the X, but also on the Y. But we can also make it a bit faster. Let's say we want it a bit faster on the Y axis. Let's multiply that by two go back and it's rotating a lot faster on the y we can increase it to some ridiculous number let's say by 100 if we go back you can see it really spinning now i don't know if that's attractive to anyone if you actually had this on your website but yeah i guess it looks kind of cool but let's just get that back to two all right so that's our cube rotating right now you can also rotate it on the z-axis as well if you want but what about moving the cube? So let's go ahead and do that. So let's do ref.current.position. And then instead of rotation in this case, we're using position. 
and let's change it on the z axis because we haven't done much with that let's say that plus equals delta what will happen with this if we save and go back you see it kind of moving close to us and it hits us and then it's past us and it keeps going down the z axis and you'll never see it again unless you refresh the page and you get the same thing but what if we want it to come back so it doesn't like leave our our view well we can make use of some mathematics here so let's go ahead and have a look at the sine graph and some of you might be a bit annoyed at me because i'm throwing you down memory lane with trigonometry but the you can see here with the sine graph well if i get a nice graph of it let's have a look um let's take this one open image and new tab here we go you can see that with sine it kind of goes up and down up and down so it's kind of rebounding back and forth the other one is also cos um, so we can use a cos um, function as well so cos graph if we open that it's another one so we can kind of make use or leverage our knowledge in mathematics here don't worry you have to don't have to calculate sine on your own we can use JavaScript for that. So here, let's say we want the Z position to equal and not plus equal because we don't want to add it onto our Z position. Math.sign and then let's get the state and then clock and then elapsed time. And let's multiply that by two. And I'll show you why elapsed time in a second. Let's also console.log the elapsed time so clock and elapsed time all right let's go back let's go back to our cube and it's kind of going backwards and forwards so it's like boomeranging towards us and if we open this up we can see that the elapsed time is increasing so after each frame and we're running the sign on that so if we run the if we look at the sign graph it's basically going to be between zero and one, and it's going to go backwards and forwards depending on the x value. So as we kind of go along the x axis, it's going up and down. That's why the elapsed time is useful here. If we use something like delta, and remember, delta was a value that was typically in the like close to zero, so 0 0.01, 0 0.04, whatever. Um, that's too small for our sign language to really pick uh, sign language sign function to really pick up you can of course add a multiply to that but yeah this is where the elapsed time can be quite useful but alright this is the very basics of animations pretty much covered so we've rotated it we've moved it as each frame progresses but now let's look at other shapes as well because right now we're looking at a cube Let's spice it up. Let's add some toruses in there. Let's add some spheres in there and see what we get. So for our next geometry, we're going to look at the sphere geometry. Now, this geometry, as you can see here on the 3JS documentation, takes in a set of parameters. So in this case, it takes in the radius, width segments, height segments, the phi star, phi length, theta star, and theta length. And it gives you a good idea of what each of these do exactly. And here we also have like a cool debugger tool where we can kind of mess around with these parameters, see what we get out. And this is a great place for you to play around with um, different um, kind of sizes, different sort of values and see what you would like. Now we'll also be looking at a debugger tool later on in this video, but for this, this part, we'll just be looking at the geometries. So let's go ahead and implement a sphere geometry. Now back where we had our cube, you can see that we use something called a box geometry. In our case, we're interested in something called a sphere geometry. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but just to make sure that I'm getting the point across. So if we click inside this box geometry, we see different types that come with React 3 Fiber. Now we have the box geometry, we have another one called capsule geometry. We have like a plane geometry, torus geometry, all of these things. And we're interested in the sphere geometry. So let's go ahead and create a new component just like we did with the cube and say const and we'll call this sphere. And let's also give it the same props that we passed in for the cube. So let's just paste that in. Then let's go ahead and return the mesh. Oops, it's not gonna auto complete. So mesh 
and then let's add in the sphere geometry not buffer geometry but sphere geometry like so and let's also give it a mesh standard material all right so let's go down here and i'm just going to comment out the cube that we had and let's throw in the sphere now if we go back to our code you can see we have a sphere and it just fills it in with the default values and here we can see what those default values are so back on the 3js docs the radius is one width segments is default 32 and the height segments is 16. so we can go ahead and play with these so inside this let's give it some values let's set the position first so we'll just it will remain unchanged so it'll stay in the middle that's all well and good then let's go ahead and add some arguments to it so let's say the values so we're going to set the radius of it so we'll set that to one and remember it's in a list so one let's set the tube radius to say 30 and the radial segments to 30 as well you may not see a huge difference but we have a very similar case we've just changed the number of segments so i guess the more you increase it the more detailed it becomes as you can see in the demo on 3js so as we increase the width segments and the height segments it becomes more spherical there are less sharp edges on that and as we decrease it you can see it becomes sharper on the edges depending on the height or the width all right so let's also just give it a color as well so um oh wait we weren't even changing the position so let's just make sure we have that there in the mesh if you caught that by the way great one um we'll say position the args we'll set that to size maybe we should call the args as well color we'll set that to color and let's just go ahead and change this here so let's say color orange and if we go back there we go all right let's look at our next shape the next one we're going to look at is the torus so back in the 3js docs let's search for a torus in the top left corner so here underneath the geometry section we see torus geometry let's click on that and we get this donut like shape like if you're a fan of the simpsons maybe you can reference this to homer but as we increase the radius you can see that change along with the tube thickness of it radial segments tubular segments and also the arc let's go back and add that in so in our code i'm just going to go ahead and copy everything that we have in the sphere let's paste that in let's have a look at the call this the torus change the geometry torus geometry and let's go ahead and make use of it so let's throw that in there torus let's give it a different position so let's say the position for the torus we'll put it more on the left side of the sphere uh, on the x-axis so we'll say two zero zero then we'll have args and in the arguments i guess these should be size and size and here we'll say 0 0.5 0 0.1 and 30 30 let's try that out color we'll give that a blue let's go back now and we can see our torus right there maybe we can increase the radius a bit so let's set that to one maybe save that go back yeah a bit too big maybe let's adjust it so maybe 0 0.8 there we go so now we have our torus look at our final geometry remember there are many geometries that we could look at but just to give you a flavor of some of the more complex ones compared to a cube or a box i'm going to have a look at the torus knot geometry so just here and we have this torus but it's kind of like twisted and it's all going it's all intertwined and again we have our parameters radius tube tubular segments radial segments p and q let's go ahead and play with that so i'm just going to go back and let's Take this torus let's copy that and let's paste that in call this the torus knot and change the geometry to be a torus knot 
geometry like so. All right, let's go ahead and throw that into our canvas, chorus knot, and we'll set the position to be, say, minus two, so more on the left side. I think I said left side for the torus. I meant right, so a bit of a long day, but anyway. All right, so for the size, let's go ahead and say 0 0.5, and then here 0 0.1, let's add 1,000, for the, it would be the tubular segment, and then 50. We can always play around with these values. Let's just throw some random ones in. And for this one, let's say this is hot pink. Because why not? Let's have a look. So back here, now we have our torus there as well. Cool, so let's go ahead and, yeah, let's go ahead and animate them just to get some of that practice in. So for the torus knot, let's do what we did for our cube. And let's copy in all of that from the cube back in our torus knot. Let's paste that in. This is more for just practice, making sure that we'll get familiar with our frames and animating them. And let's go ahead and reference that to ref. All right, let's go back. And now we see our spinning and moving our torus as well back and backwards and forwards let's do that for the sphere as well kind of look cool as we're looking down on like a bouncing ball maybe so let's take the sphere which is right there let's copy all of this and paste that in and let's set the reference to that as well say so ref like so and now we have the same for our sphere but one thing that annoys me a bit with the sphere is that we can't really tell that it's a sphere. Like uh, you may do this and you might say, oh, I can't really see the lighting or you wanna see finer details of your geometries. There is one cool thing that we can do, which is show the wireframe. And for that, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and change the background to be black. So back in the CSS, I'm gonna set body and then background color. I'm just gonna set that to black, like so. Go back now, now everything's black. All right, so back in our app where we have the sphere, let's go ahead and in the mesh standard material, we can add something called a wireframe and just add that in as a Boolean value. But now we see the wireframe of the shape itself, which looks pretty cool on its own as well. Like it has this kind of cyberpunky kind of feel. And yeah, that's a nice way to see uh, how like your segments are how many segments you have and how they look your height etc and you can do that for all types of materials as well so we can do that for our torus knot and our torus as well but all right that pretty much shows you how you can use different shapes and how they work and it's always a good idea to look at the 3js docs when look using the shapes that come with this as you get to get a better idea of like the sort of parameters that they take in and play with them as well but now we're gonna go ahead and look at interactions. So for interactions, it would be cool if we could, you know, kind of hover over an item and it would do something, maybe even click on something. So let's have a look at how we can do that. And let's go back to the code. What I'm gonna do, let's just focus on the sphere for now. I mean, you can pick whatever shape as we're not gonna be messing too much with like the size of these objects anymore. And down where we have our canvas, I'm just gonna go ahead and comment out the torus and the torus knot. And the reason why I'm commenting it out is because I want all this to be on GitHub so you guys can, of course, see like the code that was written. So we go back now, we just have our sphere. Now the rotation's a bit too fast for my liking. So let's go ahead and slow that down a bit. So if we go back to our sphere, we have that right there. Now for this, let's just say we, let's just remove the bouncing up and down and let's just, we just have it rotate on the Y axis. And let's slow this down quite a bit. So let's set this to like 0.2. And if we go back now, we just have a very steady rotating sphere and we see the wireframe of it as well. It was kind of cool. But anyway, let's do something so that when we hover over it, it 
changes like we can maybe change the color of it as we hover over it so in here let's go ahead and make use of some of our old react friends say const and is hovered and set is hovered now here we'll say use state and we'll set that to a default false all right so what we want is when we hover over this we want it to say change color so instead of it being orange we'll set it to light blue so how can we do that so the first thing is in our mesh we can use the following props so let's say on pointer um, enter we'll use the event that comes with that and then say let me just shrink that a bit and say event dot stop propagation and then set is hovered to true now just a quick explanation of what this stop propagation is it just ensures that when our mouse enters the mesh the event is contained just to the mesh so no no other element in our react application cares whether or not we entered the sphere or not all right so we have that and then let's have our on pointer leave and for that let's just say with well, the moment we our mouse leaves it then we set is hovered to false all right so if we go back we shouldn't really see a change or anything when we had hover over it but now in our color we can say something like this so let's add a fixed value so if is hovered then we want it to be orange otherwise set it to say light blue we go back now when we hover over it it becomes orange when we leave it it goes back to light blue so pretty cool so that's how we can use like is hover or hover over our objects using the sort of um, code that ships with react anyway all right so that's when it, that's what happens when we hover over it what about if we change speed as well so can we also use this information in our use frame so let's go back to our sphere and in use frame let's do something like this let's say const speed equals is hovered so if it is hovered we want the speed to be one otherwise we want it to be 0.2 now when we can now we can change that to multiply itself by speed so if we go back if we hover over it, it goes faster let go it stops hover over it faster let go it stops so that's how we can use interactions uh, to change like the speed we can also do something like changing the size so you can really go wild with this uh, i'm just like showing you the basic examples of this so what if yeah if we clicked on it the size changed so let's go back let's add another one let's just copy this and paste it we'll say is clicked and then set is clicked now if we go down we can say on click and set is clicked to not is clicked all right so we can also if we go back if we click on it nothing happens but let's say we change the size every time we click on it now mesh also has a prop called scale and we can set that we can change that so what scaling does is it takes the initial shape and either stretch makes it bigger or smaller so we can do is clicked and we'll say scale it by 1.5 otherwise leave it as is let's go back now if we click on it, it becomes bigger click on it again smaller So that's how we can also use interactions to change the size. 
but that pretty much covers like the basics of like interacting with our objects. Next, I want to show you this really cool library, this kind of plugin with React 3 Fiber called Dry. So Dry or 3 in German is a companion library to React 3 Fiber. And what it does is that it provides a collection of helpful utility components, hooks and helpers that basically simplify the process of creating 3D scenes in React and 3JS. So for example, a lot of the stuff that would take quite some code for us to implement, like I'd say rotating a, a object with our mouse or moving around the screen, that would take quite some code. And what Dry does is it kind of provides us with help functions like that. So very common sort of functions that you would tend to use in uh, React 3.js. Now it also offers like a bunch of other really cool kind of fun uh, helpers. And we'll explore a couple of them in this tutorial. Now I'm just on the GitHub for Dry. So it's by PM and DRS, the same guys who are behind React 3 Fiber and the community that's also helping them build it. So big shout out to these guys. But let's go ahead and have a look and yeah, basically just start using it. So in order to install it, the installation is npm install React 3 Dry. So let's go ahead and copy that. I'm just going to go back over to the terminal and just cancel this for now and let's paste it in. All right, so we're all now set up with dry. So let's go ahead and run this npm run dev. Okay, so what we're going to look at first. So let's go ahead and add something where we can rotate around our sphere. So I'm just going to actually, let's turn this back into a torus. So I'm just gonna comment this out and yeah, let's go with the torus knot. So bring that back in just so we can mess around with some of these shapes. Let's change the position. So let's set that to zero, the size of it. Yeah, maybe we can maybe increase the radius a bit. Let's set this to one, maybe see what happens. All right. And let's just stop this rotation that's happening in the torus knot. So just here, I'm just going to comment this out. Um, actually, I'm just going to comment out the use frame. All right. So if we go back, we have a stationary torus and what I want is for us to basically rotate this thing. So how can we do that? Well, it's fairly simple with with dry. So all we have to do is use this thing called orbit controls. And this automatically imported it for me. If it hasn't for you, then you can, of course, just import it like so. So import orbit controls from React 3 dry. And notice the dry is coming straight from the dry library that we just installed. OK, so let's go ahead and fix that. So we're all up and running now and let's go ahead and check it out. So we already know what we kind of want to expect. We want it to rotate around our torus. So now if I click and kind of move it, you can see how we're kind of revolving around or orbiting our torus knot. Now you can also scroll. So if you scroll in and out, you can zoom in and out of it. So that's pretty cool. We already have that out of out of the box with React Dry. We didn't have to add anything in. We just have to throw that component in with it. So you can zoom all the way out and zoom all the way back in, which is pretty cool. All right, so that's like the first part of orbit controls. But let's say you didn't want to have that whole zoom in and out. How, do you, how would we stop that? Well, the cool thing is in orbit controls, we have the props that come with it. So we can have a look at some of the stuff that comes. So we have, you know, rotate, auto rotate speed, um, stuff to do with the camera, the enable pan, enable rotate, enable zoom. So maybe we can use that. So if we set enable zoom to false and we go back. Now, if we try and scroll, we can't. In fact, this, the page itself is bouncing up and down because it thinks that we're trying to scroll. So, but we can continue rotating it. So we can rotate, but we don't have to scroll, which is pretty slick. What else do we have? We have, let's see, we even have minimum zoom. 
So we can even mess around with how much we're allowed to zoom in and out of it. Uh, yeah, so that's some of the cool props that come with Orbit controls. So that's one thing that's there with our dry. What other cool things can we get out of it? Let's have a look. So if we go back to dry, scroll down, see what else there is. So we have a lot of things around abstractions, cool gizmos. Um, let's see. There's something called wobble. So there's this thing called mesh or wobble material. Let's see what this does. Let's go ahead. We can see that they've given us a good idea of how this is to be implemented. So let's try that with our torus knot. So back with our component, let's check the torus knot. And instead of using mesh standard material, let's go ahead and use the mesh wobble material. Let's do mesh wobble material and set it like that. Let's go back. And now we can see that there is some kind of wobble going on. It kind of looks like it's rotating, but we can kind of see how it's wobbling if we rotate it a bit around it. Like the whole thing is kind of just, yeah, like wobbling, I guess. What else does it say in the <clears throat> docs? So it has like a factor and a speed. So let's mess around with the factor, let's say factor is five, what happens then? So it's wobbling even more, there's more of a kind of wobble and twist going on. The speed of it, let's increase the speed, see what happens, set that to 20, let's go back. Now it's going crazy. So let's maybe change that to say two. A bit slower. That's pretty cool. There's this really abstract kind of look going on. Might be nice for like an intro to a website maybe. But those are some of the things that come with React Dry. So there's a few other cool things that we can have a look at. <clears throat> so let's go back. For example, let's see the mesh distort material. Let's have a look at that. If you click on it, it will send you to like a code sandbox. Let's see what this gives us. So they've got this cool kind of gradient plane where when we move our mouse over it, it kind of reacts to our mouse position and kind of wobbles with it. And if we look at the implementation, everything seems to be coming right out of the box with React Dry. So they've got this use cursor. So it kind of works with how we use our cursor. And I guess this works with hovering over our mesh object so it can detect it better and we have mesh distort material which i guess gives us this wobbly kind of feel to it but yeah there's quite a lot that kind of comes with react dry but one thing i really want to show you just before we leave off the topic of dry is if we head back to our code or our example so we understand, we know that there's light being emitted onto our object. We can see from like the, the shades uh, or the shade of our material changing depending on how close or how distant or how hidden it is from our light. But we can't really see the light and that sometimes might be a bit annoying, especially if you're trying to adjust where the light is shining. Now we can change that, we can add a helper to it so that we know where our light is. And to do that, we can use a hook that comes with dry called use helper. Now let's head back to our code. We need to do a bit of refactoring before we do this because we cannot use our hook in the same component that is, rent, is returning our canvas. So what we can do is take all of this. So let's take everything in between our canvas. Let's just copy all of that cut all of that and what I'm going to do is create a new component we'll call this one scene and we'll return everything that we just took out and of course let's just wrap that around with some empty tags and paste that in here as well okay and let's then just throw our scene back inside 
our main component. So our app component, and we go back, nothing's changed. But let's have a look at this use helper. So if we go to our scene, we have our directional light and our ambient light. We know with our ambient light that everything's lit up the same amount. So we don't really have to deal too much with our ambient light. We kind of understand how that's going to work. But our directional light, we don't really, we can't visually see where it's positioned. So to do that, let's go ahead and create a reference. We'll say const and directional light ref and set this to use ref. All right, then with our directional light, let's go ahead and add ref and say directional light ref. And again, if you haven't noticed, like my code formats on save. So just in case you get confused as to where the lines are all jumping around. But now we can say use helper. And then in there we can add, say, directional light reference. And then we type in the name of the object. Now, this is something that you have to keep an eye out for. So we've called it directional light helper. And if we go to the top, it's been automatically imported for me. It's coming straight from the three library. So the, the actual three JS library. And we need that because we need to tell it what type or what type the object is. And let's add some points. We say 0.5 to give it a, si a size and we'll color it white. Now, if we head back, we can see this kind of square being formed, this sort of plane and this kind of line. And that's showing us where the light starts and how it's being like sent to or the direction in which the light is traveling. So we can change the position. So if I change the position and say, let's increase it by one in the Y direction, see it's gone up a bit so if we just restart that and you can see it's kind of like pointing in that direction so this is a great helper for when like dealing with lights you can even apply it to other objects but for lights i find this quite useful especially as a beginner because you know i mean not even as a beginner because you know you want to know where your light is where it's where the direction of that light is going so that can be quite helpful but now let's go ahead and look at a, another library which will help us debug whilst we're in the browser. And what I mean by that is we've seen throughout this tutorial us jumping back and forth from our browser to our code editor, back to our browser, changing different values, tweaking them and seeing what, they, what the output will look like. But what if we could do all of that within the browser itself? Luckily for us, we have another library developed by the same people who worked on Dry and React to Fiber, and this is called Lava. And Lava provides us with this cool like UI where we can toggle different values such as colors, um, n values for numbers in terms of whether it be like your radius or your position. Let's go ahead and try this one out. So in the GitHub repo for Lava, uh, I'll also add this in the link. Uh, I'll add a link in the description so you guys can, of course, check it out. And it's also giving a warning that this uh, repository is under heavy development. So I guess we can, if something does break, you know, don't go crazy because they did warn us. So let's go ahead and use this. Let's copy that, head back. Let's go ahead and install it. All right, now that install, let's go ahead and continue running our application. And in order to use the first thing we need to do is add it into our main.jsx file. And we don't have to do this, but I tend to do this. Let's just paste that in there. Now back in our app.jsx file, there's a hook that comes with Lava, and that hook is called use controls. They also mention it here, this use controls. So all right, where should we use it? Well, why don't we go ahead and try it out on the light. So let's say we want to change the intensity of our directional light. So this light that you can see being emitted from this square or this kind of helper that we added. So to do that, let's go to our scene and let's go ahead and say const. Let's say we want to mess around with the light color and the light in 10 city 
and then to use controls which for me automatically imported it again from Leva but you can see here that the import statement is like so all right so back where we were use controls and let's go ahead and first let's just add light color let's mess around with that let's say the default value for light color is white now if we go back to our directional light component let's go ahead and pass that prop in say color equals light color now i head back and as you can see here on the right side we have this this uh, debug ui where we can change the color so if i click on that and change the values you can see how it automatically changes our object or the way the light is being emitted onto our uh, object so say we can go for something like pink make it quite bright and you can see the, those changes happening in real time that's cool so what about the light intensity how can we do that so with the light intensity what i want to show you is how we can kind of customize the way in which we allow certain values so let's say the default value so value is going to be 0.5 so that's going to be the initial starting value Let's then say that the minimum value that this can ever achieve is zero and the maximum, let's say five. You can put whatever numbers you want, just as long as they make sense and the min is smaller than the max. And let's go ahead and pass the light intensity into our direction of light. Let's say light intensity. So if we go back now to our example, as we increase the light intensity that you can see here, you can see how that is reflecting the same change. So we can then change the color, we can increase the intensity of it, giving it a nice effect until we kind of find what sort of values we think look good. So now we know that this color works, this uh, 7F577F, 7, 7F, and the light intensity of five looks good. So that could be one reason why, uh, or one cool way of discovering different values. But we can also change the way in which the value inc increments. So we can say step, and we can say increments by 0.1. So if we head back now, we can see as we change this, it goes down by 0.1, which can also be quite helpful. So this is just some small things, small change that you can add to Leva to make sure you kind of find the, or build out the best debugger for your application. So that's it for the, the the light. Let's go ahead and apply it also to our shape because you know we want to know what's the best shape for our torus knot. So inside torus knot, let's go ahead and do the exact same thing. So let's say fonts, let's say we want to mess around with the color of the torus knot and the radius and remember the radius is the first value of the args list that we pass in say equals use controls and let's set the color to so originally light blue and it will be complaining because we're making use of color and then let's say that the radius so the exact same thing say value is five the minimum can be is one max say that's 10 and the step is 0.5 all right so if we go down and let's change some of these up so let's say that the color for this is going to be color uh, let's just get rid of this color here and then the radius so the first value in our args let's go ahead and just use a spread operator say radius and then spread the size so back in our scene just get rid of that first value in Taurus knot and let's head back so now you can see we've got this like really big radius right now it's set to five it looks kind of cool it looks like we're in i don't know some 
don't know what that looks like. It's like in a bowl of purple spaghetti falling or something. I don't know. But let's go ahead and mess around with these colors. So let's change the color of that to, let's say, something blue. Or let's make it even spaghetti-like. Let's have a look. What's a good spaghetti color? Say something like that, maybe. Maybe increase the light a bit. The radius, let's make it even stringier, a little bigger. It's kind of cool, that. So yeah, this is how you can really mess around with Lever to really find like the best sizes and the best colors, etc., for your um, 3D objects. And of course, you can do a lot more. Definitely recommend trying out Laver. This is, of course, just like a tester or a taster of things like Dry and Laver and even React 3 uh, Fiber. But that pretty much brings us to the end of our tutorial. Uh, I'm really curious as to what you guys build. So, yeah. Uh, tweet me and show me your uh, creations. I'll add the link to my Twitter in the description. And um, otherwise, stay healthy, stay safe. And I hope to see you in the next video.